cultural heritage is at risk every day. In the previous lesson, we have seen the definitions of cultural heritage, distinguishing between tangible and intangible heritage. Now let's see in detail what are the main risks that it can face. First of all, we have to distinguish between the risks coming from human intervention and from nature. Threats to cultural heritage derived from human intervention can be broadly identified as conflicts, including war and terrorism, political and economic crises causing looting, economic development such as agriculture, construction of small and large-scale infrastructures, etc., mass tourism. Apart from the damages due to human intervention, natural disasters such as floods, earthquakes, fires, hurricanes are another great risk for cultural heritage. Let's analyze all these points. First of all, conflicts, including war and terrorism. Despite of the existence of international laws, the destruction of heritage sites, monuments and historical buildings is a very common practice for different reasons. Destructions can be committed for religious, social, political and ethnic reasons, but also for illegal profits. Second, the political crisis and the lack of control on the territory can incentivize the looting and the black market of antiquities. Among programs of the International Council of Museums, there is the fighting of illicit traffic of archaeological and artistic objects. For this reason, in January 2013, the International Observatory on Illicit Traffic in Cultural Goods was born. One good example of the work of the observatory is the Red List database for Iraqi cultural objects at risk. The fight against illicit traffic requires the development of legal instruments together with a serious raising of public awareness. The dissemination of the right information and the increase of the awareness of the importance of cultural heritage can somehow help to prevent destructions and looting. Of course, museums, private collectors and auction houses must never acquire objects with uncertain provenience and without illegal documentation. Third, economic development. In fact, activities related to agriculture, to water facilities, as well as the construction of infrastructures such as dams, roads, railways, quarries, can bring serious damages to the heritage sites and landscapes. Lastly, mass tourism. This is another human-caused phenomenon with a considerable role in the partial or total destruction of protected areas. It is well known how often tourists do not take care of the places they are visiting, for example throwing rubbish, collecting pieces of statues and mosaics, going to forbidden parts of the sites, and so on. For some of these points, there are national and international laws and protocols, but they are too often neglected. Let's now focus on museums and collections, because dangers are always around the corner. Yes, it is difficult to foresee many risks, but some major damages can be partly prevented or limited by developing good management policies. For this reason, all the museums should draft and follow a disaster preparedness plan, which is a good practice to protect the collections, the buildings and the people. It consists in outlining responses and procedures to deal with collections and risk or damage. Let's see how disaster preparedness plan could be drafted. For starters, the plan must be written in the simplest way as to be easily read in case of emergency. The emergency plan must be easy to follow because staff must be trained and know how to put it into action. Moreover, it is necessary to prepare an emergency toolkit. Spectrum 5.0 drafted the emergency planning for collections. According to this workflow, the first thing to do is to assess the risks to objects in emergency situations. The second one is to create a plan with recommendations to minimize the risks. This risk assessment should be regularly reviewed. The next step is to produce an emergency plan, including a list of key people and their contact details, a list of locations for evacuation, the priority codes for removing objects, a list of insurance contacts, a list of needed equipment, the first aid steps for damaged objects. Many cultural institutions have drawn up a disaster preparedness plan because it is the most important preventive measure for preserving collections. 
the International Council of Museums has created a specific committee called Disaster Risk Management Committee. This is a committee devoted to emergency response for museums, where professionals from all over the world monitor heritage emergencies and provide suggestions and assistance. Another example is IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations, which has the purpose to ensure that library and archive materials will be preserved in accessible form for as long as possible. The maintenance of cultural heritage includes preventive and remedial strategies. In some cases, it is in fact possible to prevent some major damages by applying good management policies in museums and heritage sites. The raise of awareness on the importance of the cultural heritage among the members of the society is another focal point to work on. The safeguard of our heritage is everyone's duty, for example when visiting a site as tourists, when dealing with heritage in any way, when seeing looting episodes. We should never forget that the loss of the cultural heritage is an irreparable loss for the entire humanity. Thank you.